Okay, so I've mentioned that there are everyday examples of process control. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get into that a little bit, but before we get into the everyday examples, so process control requires a whole bunch of different things to happen. Um, you need different parts of your chemical plant or of your everyday example of process control in order for process control to work. Okay, so we're gonna learn some of these definitions first, and then we're gonna get into an everyday example of process control. So the first and most important thing about process control is what's known as your controlled variable or CV. This is the process variable to be maintained just right. In other words, this is the, the, um, the process variable that you have to get at specification. A lot of times, now I mentioned concentration of impurity or something like that, but a lot of times in process control, the variable that you're actually controlling, the controlled variable is a temperature or pressure or tank level. And we'll get to why that is much later. <laughs> why is it not a concentration as often? Okay, so that's your controlled variable. You have a set point, which is your desired value. of your controlled variable. You have your manipulated variable. And actually, let me scroll down just a second here before I go on. So you have your controlled variable here. Let's say in this particular case, you have a reactor that has to be heated by steam and you have your product temperature and that might be your controlled variables, your product temperature. You have your manipulated variable which is the process variable that's changed to make sure your controlled variable is on set point. And almost 100% of the time, this manipulated variable is a flow rate of some kind. So in this particular example that I've sort of illustrated here, your manipulated variable might be your flow rate of steam. Now this book uses F as a mass flow rate. So F is your manipulated variable of steam. Sorry, F of your steam is your manipulated variable. Now, process control is all about controlling a process. So what is the process in this particular case? So the process is your system, meaning your equations, with your manipulated variable as input and controlled variable as output. So when you write down, say, a differential equation or a series of differential equations that describe your system, and one of the inputs to your equations is your manipulated variable, and one of the outputs to your equations is your controlled variable, that set of equations is your process. What else? Sensor. Now, the sensor is super important. Um, because that measures value of your controlled variable. So how will your system know that your controlled variable is not on set point unless the controlled variable is being measured? So you have some sort of temperature sensor which gets placed on the product stream and that will tell you what your temperature is, right? So that's your sensor. I'm gonna put a little S here for sensor. You need to have something called the actuator, which is also in some sort of fancy way called the final control element. Actually, both of those are fancy words. Um, it's basically just the valve. So let me go ahead and write down the full um, definition here. It's the physical element 
that changes. So the value of the manipulated variable changes. And it's almost always a valve or it could be a pump, but both of those change flow rates. So your actuator is in this case a valve and it has a little stem and a little half circle on top of it is the way it's drawn, that's your actuator. Finally, you have the controller. And the controller is a computer. That compares the CV, actually the sensor value really, because we don't really know the value of the CV. We have the sensor value, which might not be accurate or it might be delayed. Like maybe the sensor takes a long time to really figure out what's going on. Okay, so it compares the, the sensor value to the set point, then changes the actuator. To compensate. Well, it doesn't change the actuator to compensate if you're fine. But if you start to get off set point, that's when it changes the actuator to compensate. Okay, so I've drawn, uh, so there's a whole bunch of words there, a whole bunch of new definitions. Uh, some of them are semi-familiar, right? Everyone kind of knows what a sensor is at least. Um, let me go ahead and draw in the controller and I'm gonna draw it in a different color so the blue doesn't blend into the diagram here. Okay, so here you have a controller and this is sort of ad hoc, right? This is not the way things are really drawn on diagrams. We'll get to that by the end of this topic here. But your sensor sends information to the controller. Your controller also gets, say, a set point. So like the operator of this particular unit operation will type in a set point that gets sent to the controller. Remember, the controller is a computer. And so the controller compares the sensor value to the set point, And then if necessary, does something to the actuator.